Hello chess lovers, Sullivan here and in today's video we are going to analyze a very entertaining attacking game played by Australian chess player Alan Goldsmith. His opponent is George Evans and this game is from 2003 Adelaide University Open. Goldsmith opened up with e4 to which Evans answered with e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. Italian game is on the board and after bishop c5 we have the aggressive Evans gambit. White is sacrificing a pawn but in return is managing to gain late in development and is getting a nice attack. Uh, bishop a5 is a popular alternative. Bishop c5 is the so-called McDonald defense. d4 he takes d4 and white castled kingside. Yeah, already white king is in safety, white is ready to launch an attack while still black king is stuck in the center of the board. D takes c3, meanwhile black is busy with grabbing pawns and white recaptured. Although let me tell you that theory in here recommends bishop takes f7 and in this case white is managing to gain better chances than when following the line with knight c3. Uh, this is a theory seen many times, but in our game after d takes c3, we have knight takes c3, d6, knight d5, knight e7, bishop g5, h6, although castling kingside is also playable, but we have h6, bishop goes back to h4, bishop g4. Uh, better was playing queen d7, I'm pinning this knight, yes. Uh, but uh, we have bishop g4. Here came rook b1, hitting on b7, rook b8, bishop b5. Pinning this knight as well, and uh, yeah, already uh, this knight is hanging. So uh, queen d7 was something uh, which was very important to play instead of bishop g4 in here. Yeah, but we have bishop g4, and then came bishop b5. So now black is forced to weaken his king side with g5 and since black weakened his f6 square a check from a there followed. King f8 and the bishop on g4 dropped although in the return black won white's dark squared bishop. Knight takes h4, knight d4, bishop c4. White has a very nice attack but still black is holding. Knight c6, knight f5, takes, takes, queen g5. Queen d5 with a double attack. Uh, black neutralized the mating threat, but this is losing. Better was knight d8. Let's see what's the problem with rook h7. Since we reached the critical position, please pause the video and try to find white's next moves. Already? Look, in here, when white played queen d5, white not only threatened queen takes f7 checkmate, but also. Uh, Queen takes c6 is the threat, and after rook h7, yeah, queen takes c6 landed. If queen takes g4, then just queen takes c7. That's why black accepted the queen sacrifice, and now let's see how is this madness going to end up. f6 check king g6, bishop d3 check king h5, h3, protecting the knight, and now the uh, rook on h7 is hanging. How to protect it? No way. Rook g7, f takes g7. Queen takes g7, and now what? How to intensify the pressure? There came a very beautiful rook g8 move. Queen takes g8 can't be played because of this fork. Black played queen d4, and knight f6 check. A very nice piece sacrifice, which, which leads to a forced mate. Stockfish says that g3 leads to a check made faster but yeah i now like knight f6 check more from a human point of view of course uh, it's more beautiful check then another check and we have a check made on the board a very very impressive uh, queen sacrifice followed by a staggering king hunt i'm sure you enjoyed this game evans gambit is never boring right in the end, the chess puzzle for you where the task is to win with the white pieces. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.